Today, we're in Algebra 1, Lesson 1-7, Combining Like Terms. So I want to start by um, doing some expanded multiplication, which is a fancy way of saying, what does two hearts really mean? Variable. What was that? Variable. Okay, yeah, so a heart is the variable here. So two heart, um, in my mind, it's um, a heart. So let, let me sw switch to red so I have this color coded. It's a heart. Do your best to draw a heart. It's a heart plus another heart. That's what two hearts means. I have two of these hearts being added together. So this two hearts converts to this. I need to copy down this plus sign. So there's that plus sign right there. And then I have three hearts. So I have to do um, one heart there, plus another heart here, plus another heart here. So this right here is the three hearts. That's my two hearts. Seems pretty basic so far, but really three hearts is three hearts being added together. Multiplication is just um, a fancy way of doing addition really quick. It's kind of like a shortcut. So therefore, if we turn it back into our expand, expanded form of just adding hearts, I have one heart, two hearts, and then I'm adding another three hearts, four hearts, five hearts. I have a total of five hearts. So the, what I can write down here is I have a total of five hearts. And box my final answer. In terms of the algebra, this two hearts plus three hearts is the same thing as two X plus three X. X is like pumpkin pie or like blueberry pie that we saw in the warm up. They are very different from other variables. X is different from Y, which is different from N, which is different from any other symbol that I can throw in here. Heart, happy face, it doesn't matter. But X is its own person. So when I add two X and three X, does anyone have a guess at what the answer is by a quiet raised hand? Quite raise hand. What is 2x plus 3x going to be? Josie. 5x. 5x, yeah. I'm going to write this down here. 5x. The reason for that is because I had an x plus an x, and then I added this. I guess I can switch to black like I did in the other problem. And I added this to another 3x's. x, oops, x plus an x plus an x. It's the same exact setup as up here. There's my three X's, there's my two X's, and all together it makes five X's. All right, let's just nod our heads. We're following. We're still waking up. Okay. All right, so let's try this one. Very similar to the warm-up. Instead of blueberry pies and pumpkin pies, we have smiley face and hearts. I want you to right now guess at what the answer is going to be for adding all of these together. Write it down here and then check with a neighbor. Write down your answer for these new symbols and then check with a neighbor. All right, quite raised hand. What is the answer here? Monse. Five hearts plus nine smiley faces. Thumbs up, thumbs down, agree, disagree. All right, Sergio, you're doing thumbs up? Okay, perfect, yeah. And it is that easy. That's the reason I'm spending so much time on making sure that we're doing the simple stuff correctly is that we have some very hard stuff in the near future. So let me give Monse your 50 XP and y'all got your 10 XP. All right. And this can be converted. Instead of a smiley face, I can make a Y. Hearts are still X's. So if you see this expression, what are you, what are you going to write? It's going to be very similar to what you're doing up here in terms of hearts and smiley faces, except we have X's and Y's. Yeah, Fernando, you already have an answer? That's okay. Hold on. We'll wait for everyone. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I just want to make sure that everyone was thinking. But yeah, 9y plus 5x. All right. Let's pause there for a sec to make sure that we understand why that's the answer. Just digest the math. Got it? You see it? Yeah, Andreas, talk to me. Because it's an expression. It is an expression. Yeah, and that's actually a key point too. So whenever you see an expression, you are just combining like terms. When you see an equation, then you're allowed to add and subtract from both sides. But we're going to hit that in um, a few lessons. But right now, we have no equal sign. It's only an expression, as Andres just said. Whenever it's an expression, then you combine like terms. In fact,
because I like what Andre said so much, I'm going to write this down and star it too. XP? Yeah, definitely XP. <laughs> if an expression combine I'm just going to say combine the terms right now because we haven't defined what like terms are. Just combine them. Just add them up. If it's an equation, if I'm looking over there in the bottom right, the yellow part, if it's an equation and it has an equal sign, then you can do some other types of math also. Maybe you'll have an expression on one side of the equation and still you can combine those terms. All right, so let's take, take a look at this one. This one is a little bit different because instead of having variables, I have x's, which used to be hearts up here, but I also have constants. Constants, if you don't like this word, I can write this down on the side too. Constants are another way of saying numbers. Seven is a constant. Seven is a number. Two is a constant. Two is a number. I'm gonna be using this word constants for the rest of the year, so make sure you understand that when I say constant, I really just mean a number. It's a math way of saying a number. All right, well, constants are like their own class, like their own variable. Treat constants like a heart or like a smiley face or something that's different from an X. All constants get grouped together. So spend 10 seconds writing down the answer to combining all of the terms here. What is the answer? So raise your hand once you have it. I'm waiting for people to keep writing though. I don't want to rush anyone. And Cohen, go for it. 8x plus 9. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Agree, disagree. Julian, yep, okay. Let's go ahead and give Cohen... Where'd you go? It's alphabetical. I keep forgetting. Correct answer, and y'all got your 10 XP for doing thumbs. Okay, yeah. It's that simple. Numbers are their own class. All right, so everyone's copied this down. Let's flip over to the back. Time for some vocab now that we've learned how to already do what the vocab is asking for. Terms. Do you remember what a term is? I defined it in the notes before, but what is terms? It's numbers and variables separated by what? Quiet raise hand if you know this one. And you can look at your previous notes. I think we did it like two or three lessons ago. Terms. Are numbers and variables separated by, Andres has an idea, but let's wait for more hands. Let's see if you can remember. Only two people know. Maybe some people are starting to think about it. All right, Gunnar, go for it. By equal signs. Ooh, not quite right. Um, but I'm still going to give you your XP. Uh, Andres. Uh, not quite right, but another good guess. Fernando? Um, multiplication, or no. All right. <laughs> good, good try. You still get, yeah, everyone's getting XP. Keep, keep trying, guys. Gunner, go for it. Addition signs. Addition signs, yeah. And what's the other one? Do you remember the other one? Subtraction. And subtraction, yeah, everyone got that. Yeah, good job, Gunner. Yeah, it's separated by addition and subtraction signs. It can't be separated by multiplication, Fernando, and I haven't really explained that yet, so we don't have a clear understanding, but when you multiply, you actually turn it into one term. So to separate the terms, you have to have uh, addition and subtraction. And sometimes you just don't have any addition and subtraction. Sometimes it's just one thing, like 7x, and there's no addition and subtraction. That by itself is just a term. You can say 7x plus 0, I guess, and that is its own term. All right, so now that we know what terms are, what are like terms? And this is something that you're just going to have to remember. It's terms that have the same variable. And let's do this in parentheses because this is the part that you will probably forget when we start going into the higher levels of algebra. And all caps, because it's super important, and I'm doing it in red, and the same exponent. Uh, 
Um, this red stuff that I wrote in parentheses, we won't be seeing this on tonight's problem set. We will be seeing it in future problem sets. Just remember that it has to not only have the same variable, but the same exponent. To give you a preview of what's to come, I cannot add, oops, I cannot add x plus x squared because this one has a squared, this one doesn't. So they have to have the same exponent, the same power up here. I can't add these because they don't have the same power. But again, that's just a preview of stuff to come. We'll come down here to the rule. So, um, I mean, obviously we have this down pretty well already without the rule, but if you forget and you need to come back and check the notes, this is here for you. Combine like terms by adding or subtracting, so slash subtracting, So combine like terms by adding or subtracting the coefficients of all like terms. All right, I want a, once you finish writing that down, this is a question that I'm going to be asking. Once you think you have an answer, you can raise your hand. Coefficient. What does that guy mean? Coefficient. It's a fancy pantsy math word again. What does coefficient mean? Anyone want to take a guess with a quiet raised hand? Yeah, Andres. Uh, uh, <coughs> uh, Let me help you out. So if I wrote down 3x, one of those is the coefficient. The number, yeah. And it's always the number in front of it. I mean, the constant. Oh, yeah. No, that's great. Yeah, it's the constant. It's the constant, <laughs> not the X. Because I caught my error. Um, I'm going to give you the XP for getting it correct and, yeah, getting the error. Technically, this, this right here by itself is a constant, but when it's added with the 3X, this whole thing now is called a term. Yeah, so it's, it's, the, it's the constant in front of X. So, Andres, let me come over here. And I'm going to write down our actual definition in a sec and uh, catching student error. So coefficient, if you don't know what coefficient was, you can say coefficient. It's the number or the constant in front of the variable. So what this rule is essentially saying is, and I don't want to go too fast. I want to make sure you, uh, everyone finished writing. What this rule is essentially saying is, look at all of the like terms. Come up here. The like terms for this one was this and this. They were like terms because they had the same variable. Again, like terms have the same variable and they also have the same exponent. So those were the like terms. I'm looking at the coefficients, the number in front of them. It was a two and a three. The coefficients, and I'm going to add or subtract those coefficients of the like terms. I'm going to add and subtract the 2 and 3. It was adding in this case. 2 plus 3, and I got 5. Notice that I didn't have multiple x's. Some people might make a mistake and say, oh, well, there are two x's also, so I'm going to put a 2 here. No. You leave the same variable out. You, you get the same variable as you started with as you end. But when you multiply, that changes. With adding and subtracting, Combining like terms, you leave this exponent by itself. All right, so that's explaining the rule. Let's do some examples, and then we can move over to the problem set. There are a total of four of these. Combine like terms, quite raised. Oh, let me let me work on this for a sec. You have ten seconds. Try example one. Get an answer. Once you get an answer, check with the people around you. Even if you're really confident, make sure that your partner or the people around you also get the same answer. And if they don't, then you can get some XP by helping them. Make sure everyone in your group is ready to go. All right, quiet raised hand. What is the answer to example one? Yeah, Jose? Negative 7z. What do we think, class? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Agree or disagree? Everyone needs to do thumbs one way or the other. Thumbs in the middle for some of us. Uh, Sergio, are you voting? Yeah. 
Okay, I, I just can see this behind your head. All right. Um, I see a few people had a thumbs in the middle, but it is indeed correct. Um, Jose, there you are. And also, y'all did your thumbs. Yeah, it is negative 7z because negative 5 minus 2 is negative 7. And another way of saying that is negative 5 plus a negative 2 is equal to negative 7. If you want to do that rule that we learned from unit 0 in our review unit. And of course, you just keep the variable. If you are doing this, I, I don't think anyone is, but don't ever put a 2 here. It's just z, just as we were doing before. All right. Um, let's try a hard one. Example 2. Give it a shot. And then, of course, check with your neighbor once you have the answer. All right. Quiet raised hand. Example 2. What was the answer and how did you get it? Fernando, go for it. Oh, okay. The answer is 7q plus 2. 7q plus 2. Let's see if that's correct. First of all, thumbs. Everyone, thumbs up, thumbs down. All right, so it looks like it's correct. And explain, how did you get 7q here? Um, well, the two negatives were kissing, so I made it to a, yeah, positive. And then All right. I added 4q plus 3q, and I got 7q, and then plus 2. Perfect, yeah. Negatives were kissing, so they combined to form 7q. Well said. Um, let me come back over here. Fernando gets 50 xp, and y'all got your 10 xp for doing your thumbs. All right. All right, example three, go for it. So example three is difficult because it has distribution. So this two is being multiplied by this entire quantity. So to do that multiplication, we do something called distribution. This two is going to be multiplied by three n. This two is also going to be multiplied by this negative four. So when I do that, I'm gonna rewrite my expression. I'm gonna keep that six n, six n. I don't know why my n looks so weird, six n. And then I'm going to add, well, what's 2 times 3n? Someone shout it out. And then I have to multiply that 2 by this negative 4. I include the sign in front of it. 2 times negative 4, shout it out. 8. Close. Negative 8. Negative 8. There it is. All right. And then you need to combine like terms. I'm going to leave this like this. All right, is there a quiet raise hand for what my final answer is? Sergio? 12n plus negative 8. Plus negative 8, like that? Yeah, that is the final answer. And I'm just going to simplify this just a little bit because you are correct, but I'm going to just leave it as minus 8. You can leave it as plus minus 8, and I'm okay with that, but I do prefer just having it as a minus 8 like that. And I forgot to box all my previous answers, so... Sorry about that. I should be getting in the habit of boxing all of my final answers. So if you haven't done so, please box all of your answers. This is indeed 12n minus 8. And example 4 is going to be a little bit difficult. So let me give you a hint on example 4. This is probably going to be the most common error. If you think you're going to do this, I, I'm going to guess about half of you are going to do this. This 3 is not just a normal 3. It is a negative 3. I keep the sign in front of it. That negative 3 is going to be distributed into the 2a and the 1. Don't just do the 3. Distribute the negative 3 into both of those terms and then rewrite the expression. Go ahead and do that now. All right, example 4. I need a quiet raise hand. Someone help me walk through this entire problem. Jose, go for it. Okay. Plus a negative 3. Okay. You have to leave that 3a also. Okay. Now I have this expression or this yeah expression. What am I going to do now? Negative 3a plus negative 3. And you get into Mr. Sindel's favorite form without the plus and minus. You do what? Negative 3a just minus 3. Yeah, well said. And box it. Oh, I hate it when it lags right when I'm on the corner. And box our final answer. Now is a perfect time to ask questions before we release you to the summary. Any questions before we do the summary? Questions, questions at all? Get your questions here. All right, that concludes the notes.